Hey everybody and welcome to today's live stream. Uh, this is the live stream which is going to be the start of a new series which is called the Creative Talk. So hey, I'm Alex. I run a YouTube channel called Alex on Design and today we are live streaming on YouTube, on Twitter, on Behance, on my page Web Donut. You can find me there as well. And as I said, today's guest is Elsa Amri. But before we get started, make sure to check out my courses and all of my digital design products and practice files from my YouTube tutorial on alexondesign.co make sure to check out my youtube channel which is alex on design to follow me on behance which is web donut which is sort of my business page over there and also make sure to check out my inception design system which is the biggest design system for adobe xd ever created as i said today's guest is elsa amri she is from tanzania she is ui ux designer and in today's session she is going to do a website design using adobe xd so without any further ado, let me bring Elsa in and she's going to get started. So hi, Elsa. Hi, Alex. And hi, everyone. So excited to be here. <laughs> feel very fortunate to be the first guest on this series. And I'm super excited to kind of take people through my design process and designing in Adobe XD. So yeah, we have an exciting live stream planned for today. We have. And thank you so much for being here and for sharing your time and your knowledge with uh, my audience. Yeah, of course. Um, so I can get right to it. I okay. just as an introduction, of course, I'm sharing my screen now and we're going to be designing a plant e commerce website design. So we're probably just going to focus on the landing page for this stream. And I think if you saw in the cover photo, you have a general idea of like what we're trying to go for. But I wanted to recreate that concept to just show people maybe some tips and tricks on how to do certain things in XD and how you can create a really simple and straightforward design in no time at all. But yeah, if you have any questions about my process or about XD or about myself, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. Um, Alex can let me know what comes up and I'll do my best to answer them. I will. Awesome. So I normally actually don't name anything because I, I don't practice naming conventions. But for this stream, I'm going to do my best to like label all my layers. So to start off with, I kind of like to figure out what my palette is for quick designs, just to kind of give me a starting point of what I want to work with. And because I know that we're doing a plant site, I already know that I kind of want to go with like some greens, maybe some grays, potentially brown slash yellow. So we're just going to play around with a couple colors on the side here. And once we finalize them a few, we'll add them to our assets library on the left. So, um, I think I'm going to do like a dark green and then also a lighter counterpart for it maybe this shade so more yellowy yeah, i think that's that's pretty good and then we'll kind of go i really like pairing green with yellow so i already know i'm gonna have like a slightly toned yellow maybe like more peachish kind of so we'll go with that let's add in some gray so i typically don't like to use um, a completely black hue. I kind of try to make it a bit grayer mm -hmm. and then maybe even like a slightly lighter one too. We'll kind of use this as a starting point and then we can obviously edit it as we go along because I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to select the plus icon under colors and it'll add all those colors for me. So later on, if we want to go back and edit any of them, you kind of just have to edit them here and it'll update those colors on your entire design. So it makes it really easy when you do it that way. Yeah. Okay. So to start off with, we want to create our hero section. So this is obviously the first thing that a potential user is going to see when they go onto your website and you want to make it eye-catchy and interesting and really captivate their interest so that they can scroll through the rest of your content. So I'm going to go with my main green for this section um, and have it here. I'm going to make it this height for now. And I'm like a big fan of rounded, curved, rounded shapes. I like don't like straight angle shape. So I'm going to give it a radius. Uh, 
Let's say I actually only want the radius to be at the bottom. So instead of selecting this option, I'm gonna go to the second. So you can specify which corner you wanna apply a border radius to. And it'll highlight which corner you're playing around with. So we're gonna focus on the bottom two corners and make those rounded. I like that okay. option in XD. When you hover over anything, mm -hmm. it just shows you the, the shortcut. Yes, it's exactly. Really same. Yeah. Oh yeah, I realized I didn't turn on my keystroke thing, but if anyone has <laughs> questions <laughs> about like shortcuts, <laughs> please let me know. Um, Cause I tend to use a bunch when I'm working. Okay, um, let's see. For our navigation, we'll keep it simple. Um, let's say about, and then we obviously wanna an appropriate color and then this is going to take us to our next thing to think about which is typography um, so like what kind of character style do we want to use in our designs so already i'm going to probably kind of put that here and make it black and then make it a lot larger so i can see what typography i'm working with for our headings i typically like to work with like one to two fonts i don't think i rarely work with more than two and for this kind of design i'm thinking that for the main font so for my headings i want to go for something that um is a serif font so i want like lots of curves and make it really fancy and stylish so i have like a bunch like i have so many fonts <laughs> to be honest but like there are a couple that i tend to use often so i already know which ones they are and i can kind of scroll through and decide which one i want to go with Let's see this is for our body. Okay. This is not bad. I want to try out this other one. Um, okay, yeah. So something not too crazy, but you know, it's easy to read, but still kind of nice and fancy. And then for our body, I don't really like to use serif fonts for body copy because you want to make sure that your small text is still legible so we're just gonna mm -hmm. go with a really standard sans serif font for this one um probably i don't know what everyone's favorite fonts are you know for anyone who's watching like which fonts do you find that you use super often for me it's montserrat like i i, <laughs> I use that for everything um that's like my favorite sans serif font i think that's the one we're going to use here as well okay i use playfair display open sense and poppins all the time so those three are like my go-to playfair is also one of my favorites i use that a lot <laughs> as well yeah. okay so for our nav we're gonna use montserrat for our nav i'm gonna do the heading first the hero section and then we can actually go back and add in our character styles to make it easier to reuse those styles later on as well so. mm -hmm. Okay, let's say we have about uh, shop now. Um, let's say collections. And we'll have one more for contact. Okay, awesome. So I actually think shop now is probably going to be a drop down because typically with e commerce sites, you have drop down elements in your navigation if you have a lot of different products that you're selling. So the great thing is I can either draw and I actually I might just draw one. Typically I'd go to my plugin icons for design. I use that for all mm -hmm. my icons in XD. Um, but because it's just a simple arrow, let's actually just draw it. I mean, not be lazy. Maybe I should draw my arrow. And because we're going for like a rounded because we're going for like a rounded type of concept i also want to add a radius to our arrow as well obviously not too much because it's tiny we don't want to turn it into a complete circle but just enough so it's not just straight corners and angles as well and that's a top tip for you guys watching uh, every time you're using icons make sure to have them look consistent so like mm -hmm. as elsa explained if they have rounded corners make sure all of them have rounded corners just for the consistency sake yep exactly and now that we have our nav links what i'm actually going to do is group them and i'm going to apply stack 
And that basically means that the distance between each of these elements, I can regulate as opposed to like manually changing it in the group because that can be a bit tedious if you're changing things around. I can just change it here. So let's say if I wanted them to be 50 pixels apart, it'll automatically move them for me. So that's a really great way of stream, like kind of making your design process a lot faster as well. Yeah. Use stacks. I use them all the time. Yeah, I, I use them like for everything. Padding included. I mean, we might use padding a bit in this design. We'll see. Okay, cool. So we have our nav here. And then on the right, I'm going to add in a couple more links as well. So for an e-commerce site, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, login. So let's say we want to give that an option for logging in as well. We'll do login and then we'll add in our cart icon. So a way for people to hypothetically access their cart. And in this case, rather than just typing in cart, I want to use an actual icon. So in my plugins, I mentioned before, I use icons for design. So I'm going to type in the icon that I'm looking for, and it will give me a bunch of different options that I can choose to go with. So let's say, let me try this. OK, this is not too bad. It's curved. It's kind of the style that I, I want to go for. So we'll use that. Yep, looks great. We'll just change the color. Yeah, I agree. And the other great thing is that you can also add your colors here. That way you don't always have to open your assets panel to change colors. You can also just change them using this view as well. So I'm just going to add in all my colors here and white. Okay. I resize that and it close. So yeah, that's not too bad. So we have our cart. I'm gonna group those together. Okay. And the other thing that we're gonna do, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't with like simple designs that I'm doing for practice or for fun, but it can help to apply a layout. It just kind of gives you a frame point for kind of seeing how you can space things out in your design if you want to work with some kind of grid system. So this is the one I typically use 12 columns. Um, I, I might adjust this a bit. Increase the butter width and column width. But this is kind of just a really simple thing that you can play around with if you need help figuring out how to space out your content in your designs. So this is 140, but I like to make my navigation bar like a bit closer to the edge. So I'm going to make it 70 and then we have our login. I believe we made it 50 pixels here. So I'm going to move that text to be 50 pixels. The part icon and then actually we might add one more icon. What if someone wants to just access the rest of their account options? I typed in person for that because that's typically the symbol that we use for accounts. And I'm going to click this link. Yep, this icon isn't too bad. Let me click another one just to see what it would look like. I think I might go with this one. Okay. And then just go ahead and delete this one. And like the other thing besides like icon styling, it does help to make your sizing also consistent. You don't want one of your icons to look huge and the other to look tiny. So it helps to just kind of make sure that they're roughly the same size as well. I'm going to group all these and once again, apply stack. Make sure that it's set to 50. I think I actually want the cart icon and the account icon to be closer together. So I'm actually going to group those within my main group and apply stacking to them. So that's, you know, a nifty way of like adjusting stacking even within elements in a group as well. She might put.
as you guys saw a bit before, Elsa just replaced the placings of the icon and uh, just, just switched the icons around. And that's one great thing about the stack. You can simply replace the places of your content inside of the stack. You can do it so in the stack itself on your screen or you can go to the left in your layers panel and then do it there as well which is awesome way if for example your clients um, decide that they don't want the placing to be like this or like this you can just simply replace the places and uh, just do it quickly that way so you don't mm -hmm. lose any time mm -hmm. 100 top top tips and tricks in, in Steve. that's what we're here for <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so now I'm just to finish up my navigation bar. I'm gonna add in a place for the logo of this hypothetical store. So, I kind of got this plant icon from um, the plugin library again, and I'm just going to have that in a really simple shape. Like nothing crazy complicated. I actually want it to like come outside from the edge a bit. So I'm going to make this green for now and I can adjust this later on. And just to make it a bit more interesting, maybe we add in another shape in this too. I mean, it's a hypothetical company, so it doesn't matter too much what the actual design is. And yeah, I think this works. So we're just going to group everything so that it can go. Gonna back this side to make sure that it's the same as our other section. So 80 pixels from the edge for our navigation. And sometimes I like to preview my designs. I don't know why. Seeing it in this window sometimes helps me get more clarity in how I want something to look. So it's like, okay, I kind of like how it looks like. And then I can go back in and make any more adjustments. So I think maybe that's just a me thing. Yeah. I know that you don't have a um, separate monitor with you. But for all of you guys who do, you can leave that preview window in the separate monitor. And then when you design, your changes are going to be um, updated live on that second monitor, which is another great way if you want. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing because you're trying to look two separate ways, but uh, I think it's great to check up a few quick changes here and there. But it's completely fine if you don't have another monitor as Elsa just did, just open up a new window, take a look and then go back to design. So fantastic option to have mm -hmm. definitely okay so our navigation section looks good i'm just going to leave it as that so we can move on to creating our hero section so first and foremost let me actually start out with the text so we know that this is going to be our heading we're going to make it white and using our layout column we're going to line it right here um tagline you know, I'm not a copywriter, so, but let's say like, just to come up with something that's kind of related to plants. Actually, I'm not even a plant person, so this is really funny that I'm even doing a plant design. I think I just wanted to work with the color green. Yep. <laughs> and... Okay, and then. It's actually 80 pixels is so far what we're working with here, which I don't think is too bad. I actually might make this a bit longer and make this a bit lower. So we have our H1 heading, right? Which I think works, but before we confirm it, let's type in our body text. So we're also going to make that white and Montserrat. I'm 45 pixels is kind of large. Maybe like 22 would be ideal. Um, okay. I tried to, I recently have actually started trying to avoid using lorem ipsum too much because I feel like <laughs> it doesn't do my designs justice. I should try and come up with actual copy. Um, yeah. let's pretend, okay, so this company is called Nurture for now. Okay. There are some plugins out there to replace lorem ipsum, so they will just put some 
random text inside real text but completely random text but sometimes you have to double check if they put something in that they should have done like the names of companies for example or something like that so i don't know just just play around with your settings and see what works the best for your design mm -hmm. yeah there's copy i think it's called copy.ai um that i've used before that's really good mm -hmm. Although it's not a plugin in XP, it's an external site. I actually don't know if I have a plugin in XP for copy. I would love one though, if you have a recommendation. So we have a question right here. It's from Sarish, so I will show it on screen and you can apply. So how to make the web design responsive on everything? Oh, okay. So normally there is a way in Nixie, as you can see here, responsive resize is on and you have like settings for manual or auto. I actually personally prefer to make my designs for each screen size manually. So let's say I complete my landing page in desktop size. I would then create another artwork for mobile size and kind of resize the elements manually. But I do know that with responsive design, if it is turned on, and you decrease the size of your window, it sometimes can automatically make your design responsive. So it'll kind of scale things down for mobile and vice versa. I just haven't used it that much. I don't know if you have, Alex. So I used many different methods. Um, Stacks is also a good uh, approach to use. So you can use padding inside of the stacks. And then when you resize your elements inside of the stack, uh, all of the elements like text and images are going to stay um, in in then within those spaces. I don't know how to explain them, but but just try it. Mm -hmm. Try to put items in a stack, and then when you try horizontal stack for for website, for example, and then for responsive, let's say on tablet, just turn the stack vertical and then expand all of your elements to fill in that space. Uh, Sirish also mm -hmm. asked, did you code uh, on your own? How did you guys collaborate with the developer? Uh, I don't know about you, but in majority of my uh, client projects, we used Webflow. So it's super simple to do. It's basically kind of like Adobe XD or Figma or whichever other tool just for the web. So you don't have to code. You don't have to know how to code, but it's a good uh, approach to know and understand the code structure, to just understand how the code works and how should you structure your files. So I would definitely recommend Webflow and I think they have a free plan uh, out there. So just try it for yourself. You can take your project and put it into Webflow, simply export from Adobe XD. You can hit Control or Command E on your keyboard to export all your assets. And I always recommend this to my students and to people watching here on YouTube and in my live streams. Make sure to export elements which are going to scale up a lot like icons as SVGs because SVG retains the file quality. And if you export PNGs, they don't. So just make sure to do so. But if you need to export PNGs, make sure to export them in multiple sizes. So you're going to see that when you start exporting from XD, it says something like X1, X2, X3, that's the size. So if the original PNG is, let's say 100 by 100, X2 is going to be 200 by 200 and so on. So just make sure to pay attention to that especially uh, when you're sending your files to developers. Mm -hmm. All good points. I, I would say the same thing as well. I also use Webflow mainly um, if I'm also developing a site or working with a developer who's going to be using Webflow. So that's my preferred tool of choice. Um, and the few times that I have been working with a developer who's building the site, not with Webflow, but maybe from scratch or through a different method, I've kind of just changed the way in which I label my different screens and pages. So it's as easy for them as possible to understand not only you know how to arrange or lay out or space out the elements on your page, but what the purpose of each screen is, what exactly yeah. is the objective for each screen. So there are a lot of different conventions you can use, um, even in just building in XD to make sure you're handing off your XD file that whoever's receiving it, like a developer, can understand what it is that you've done and how to use the materials that you've designed as well. Yeah. In any case, it's a good practice to name your layers, to name your files, to properly organize your files, because 
even if you are the one who is doing it later, either in code or web flow or whatever, it's going to be much simpler and faster for you to get your head around where are all of these assets like images, like icons, like fonts and stuff like that. And also I would just like to add to that, if you're working with React and React Native, there are good plugins inside of Adobe XD. So right from XD, you can export React components. You can share them with your developers, or if you are a developer, you can simply tweak a few lines of code here and there just to make the perfect result. And there you go, you can ship quite easily directly in Adobe XD. Exactly, sure, some awesome tips. Thank you for the question though. It's a really good question. Yep. Okay, so now I'm pretty much almost done with my hero. I did make a button really quickly here and I used padding as well to kind of do it. Um, I'll actually undo so I can show how I use padding. But essentially I created my background shape, which is this pill shape I like to use for buttons and then my text. For the CTA, we're just gonna go with find a plant. Um, I'm actually gonna decrease the size of my CTA as well. And set it to center. So by selecting both the text and the shape, we can group them together and then apply padding. So right off, it'll tell us kind of what padding we've currently have in place for each side. So that's right, top, bottom, and then we can adjust that so it's consistent. So for instance, right and left, I want to go with 35. But also highlights it on the shape as well, which is really nice. And then top to bottom, let's say. I go with, actually, I think I might want to go with like 18. And it'll adjust it for you. So it makes it a lot easier when you're creating kind of buttons or shapes of like text and elements to kind of adjust the spacing a lot faster and easier. Okay. Can you do me a favor and just drop down the opacity of your grid? I think it's going to be a bit ah. easier for people to see. Yeah, yeah of course. Is that better? Yeah, much better. Thanks. Okay, yeah. No worries. Apologies, guys. This is how I design all the time. Just like <laughs> blocks. No <laughs> worries. I, I, columns. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either until a viewer on YouTube pointed it out. He says something oh. like, uh, my eyes hurt or something like that. So <laughs> from that point on, for every video, I just always adjust it up front. That's so a don't really worry good about it. Of course. Okay. So right now here, I've created this... Um, doorway we're gonna call it a doorway shape um, and I want to put an image of a plant on top because you know we want to add visuals to make our hero section more visually appealing so I actually have um, a video um, so I have my plant set up from Adobe stock so this is typically where I go to get a lot of my image assets and I think that it works really well that way so you can see here it says we download for free you have standard license extended license and when you have actual stock items um or stock i think they're called assets you can kind of download images here for free so i've already downloaded this plant image so we're going to and i have it opened up in photoshop because right now since it's a jpeg it comes with a white background but obviously when placing it in here we don't necessarily want to background to kind of come with the plant. We just want the plant on its own. So I like to edit those kinds of things in Photoshop really quickly and easily. I know this is like an XD stream, but um, I guess we're also doing a bit of Photoshop as well. It doesn't matter because it's a native option in XD. So at any point you can go from XD to Photoshop, edit a photo yeah. and then close it, go back to XD. It will pop with those changes. So every time you have some changes like, um, I don't know, darkness or uh, lightness, you have to adjust all of these changes. You can go quickly into Photoshop, adjust all of these changes, and then go back to XD with those changes applied, which I think it's a great okay. option. I agree 100%. It's just really fast to do it that way. So we have cropped out the plant that we want to feature in the hero section. And then I'm going to go to select color range. And this is just to select the white or like off white areas in my image. That way, when I'm masking it, it only selects the white background and everything else is still in place. So using color range is like, an e I find it an easier way of doing it when you have a very distinct solid color already. And then we'll click OK, and then we'll select our quick selection tool on the panel here, or double use the shortcut, and go to select and mask. 
and just invert that so it's cropping out the white background and leaving us with our subject. And then here you can, you know, kind of apply with some, work with some of these different um, filters to adjust how the masking is applied. So if you want to smooth out the edges so it's not so harsh, you can play around with smooth. If you want to kind of blur out the edges, you can play around with feather. Um, I think there are a lot of different videos available that can help you figure out how to play around with these different constraints and refinements in Photoshop. But I'm just going to smooth it out a bit. That's all I really need to do. And then in output, I wanted to provide me with the masked image. So I'm going to select layer mask and click OK. And so we have our nice, nice little image here. Um, and then I'm just apply layer mask. So I like to use Creative Cloud libraries a lot, like Alex said, in kind of transferring content between different Adobe programs. So I've already created a folder within my Creative Cloud library called Plant e-commerce site. So all I'm going to do is just drag my layer that I have in Photoshop to my library and then if I go back to XD arrow it'll show you all the different folder so we're obviously find the e-commerce site and whatever fix or colors or elements you've added to this folder it actually has to load for a while so we're gonna let it load for a while but that's just kind of a really easy way to kind of work with different assets across different Adobe programs too. And Carpius, uh, sorry, not Carpius, but Sirish had a question before about Figma. Figma cannot do this. So this is one of the advantages of Adobe Creative Suite. So you can create these libraries, you can switch between all of your assets uh, in between all of these apps. So for example, if you create a pattern in Adobe Illustrator, you can use that same pattern in Adobe XD. You can even use it in Dimension in 3D. You can animate it in After Effects with one single pattern. So you can easily switch between all of these apps. And that's why majority of people still use Adobe apps because of the versatility, because you can do all of these things. While if you try to achieve any one of these things, which I just mentioned with a separate tool like Sketch or Figma, just for this sake, uh, just for this case, then you will have to go to free alternatives, which are not really all that good. And synchronization between all of these free alternatives is really bad. So you will have to export, then save, then upload to Dropbox. Then basically what I'm saying is time is money. Time is of the essence. And if you can achieve all of it in a single suite of apps like Creative Cloud, why not? And Sirish also had a question uh, for me. He said he's a beginner uh, in web design and he wants to switch from graphics design to UI UX. What are the best tips uh, for going based on my experience? And I will also ask Elsa to uh, reply uh, after me. So basically the tip is try to be as logical as possible because uh, no matter which part of design you are doing and no matter what you're doing as a designer you always have to think about uh, which problem you are solving and it's more pronounced than ever in ui ux design you have to think about your user you have to empathize with your user you have to understand what are their problems and how can your design solve their problems so the main uh, the main error and the main mistake I see young designers make is they try to make everything look pretty without any reason behind why is it so pretty. So don't try to focus too much on the design itself. That will come over time with practice. Try to form a solution for the problems. So how do you do your user research? How do you do your user testing? How do you approach solving certain problems that your client has in certain niche of the market because not all the clients have the same problems. So think about all of those things and you're going to do good basically. So if Elsa has anything else to add to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with all those points. I think they're super important to consider as well. I also started out in graphics design. Um, that was kind of my first design job. And one thing that's helped me since transitioning into more UI UX is not only what Alex mentioned in terms of thinking more about the user and how you're designing for the user, but also how much of an impact your product is that as a way to 
to determine how to approach designing your work. As a graphics designer, I was yeah. like a junior art director. We really have a lot of opportunity to be, you know, free to think outside the box. A lot of the things that we we're working on were, you know, billboards and posters and stuff that was more about what the company wanted, so like what the client was expecting. We weren't really thinking from the perspective of, oh, you know, if I put use this font here or if I put this element here, how will that impact the experience of the person reviewing, you know, this poster or this design or this social media graphic? We didn't really consider those factors yeah. a lot. So kind of since transitioning, that's something that you do have to start thinking about more often. It's not just about making something that's visually appealing. It's also about making something that directly addresses the issue that you're solving for. And I think that can also be the hardest thing to change in how you think as well. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, great question. I love the question. There's a lot of them. Okay, so we are now, um, I don't know how much plants cost. Let's see if it's like 14 99. So we're now building the section of our site where we are going to be featuring like different products and like a, like a gallery. So let's say we're showing new arrivals. That's kind of what we're working with here. We finished up with our hero section. We added in our cropped little plant image here. So, you know, that's kind of just a great way of adding a bit more visual flair to our hero. Maybe if we have time, we can go back and add a couple more different design elements. But for now, we're kind of going to work on the next section. So I'm actually going to make it a bit smaller. This is our H2 text. I'm going to actually add it as a character style. So when you add a style, you can also rename it. So instead of having this kind of say the name of the font, we can call it H1 heading. That way, I know when I'm using it elsewhere, this is for my H1 headings. Same thing with our H2. We can rename it H2 heading. The other great thing is that I can actually rearrange them. You can select both and then you can group them. So this is our heading. So when you have lots of different styles, using groups is just a really easy way of making it easier to keep track of all your different character styles. And it works for colors as well. Too. Okay. We're also going to add in a little arrow here because ideally the user would be able to scroll through these different sliders or carousels, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to make this a pretty simple design. We can go with the dark gray and as always, we're going to go back to our trusty plugin and see if it can give us a, an arrow design that we want to work with. Okay. I actually like this one, so I'm going to actually replace the circle I made just with this arrow design. So I'm going to resize it so it's roughly the same size and then delete this. And what I also like to do if I'm trying to align things, so for instance, I want this to be in the middle of this shape, I can select both and then you have different alignment options here. So this will align them in the middle. So it makes it easier. You don't have to like fiddle around and try and do it on your own. Okay, awesome. So we have our left arrow and our light arrow. And then I think I'll make this a bit larger. Okay, cool. So as always, we're going to go back to Photoshop and we are going to undo everything we did. I'm going to crop out a different plant image that we want to work with here. Um, okay, I wonder which one I should go for. Let me go for this nice tiny one here. So because the plants are really close together, you'll notice that if I try to like select it this way, I can get like bits of the other plant. So you can kind of work again around that in different ways, but I'm just going to literally draw around the plant that I want and then apply the same masking process as I did for the first one. So 
So we are 42 minutes in. So if you guys have any other questions, let us know. Send them in the chat and don't be shy. Yeah. We'd love to answer any more questions that people might have. Like, is there an e-commerce store that people maybe like a lot? That they're like, yeah, this is a, this is a really cool design. I'm very curious about that. our shape and as always i think this works really well so i'm gonna drag it to our library so it should appear in our folders right here we're gonna give it a couple seconds as well to just load in the meantime let's add in the rest of our plants so i i, I quite literally don't know plant names i don't even know what we're just making up plant names at this point debating whether I want to make things red or sorry not red gray or if I want to make them the yellow because yeah, that yellow as much I think I might just make them gray I feel like the yellow is very distracting unless I created like another a lighter version of the yellow potentially I think grays are good maybe you can just change the color of your arrows to the color of the button Perhaps that might work. Mm -hmm. I agree. Let's get a bit closer to the heading and not too far away. And then yes, we have Drew in the chat. Hey, Drew, nice of you to be here. And he says hi. And what are you building today? So Elsa is creating a website for plant matching in Adobe XD. And thank you for joining us. Nice of you to be here. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to, so this ideally would be a section for um, advertising. If you had like a newsletter or something like that that you wanted people to subscribe to. So one thing I wanted to show is I mentioned before that we're working with a lot of rounded shapes in this design. So one way of adjusting radius is obviously by playing around with the values here or you could play around with them in here. And if you did want to only adjust like one corner using these handles, you just have to hold option on a Mac. I don't know if it's different on a, on a Windows computer and then it'll only adjust it for that one corner. So that's also another tip. Okay, our plant is done, which is great. Ooh, I love it. I don't think we'll have time to like crop all of them, so I might just reuse the same plant photo. Let's pretend we've used different ones for each each thing. But I might crop like one more for our newsletter section. But yeah, we're going for like unconventional designs here so we want we don't our our plant shape to be inside the shape we kind of wanted to poke out kind of like with the hero image too so that's where we're gonna go it looks great and it looks modern exactly that's what we're going for a modern design yeah that works i'm just gonna 
copy. I'm, I'm holding Alt to duplicate this. Alt and Shift. So Alt duplicates the, the element and Shift kind of helps you drag it on a straight line. So as opposed to if you weren't holding Shift, you could drag it anywhere. But we want it to be on the same line, so we're going to hold Shift as well as another um, tip. Closer. Okay, so we have our lovely plants right here. Ooh, I want to show off another really nice plugin. <laughs> so like our design has like lots of whites and stuff, which which is nice. I mean, I like to keep things simple at times, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to fill an empty space. So one plugin that I use a lot is called Lobular, and it literally just creates random blob shapes for you. It's kind of amazing. And then you can like adjust the different parameters. So like, this is pretty nice. Um, and color wise doesn't matter so much because we're the color when we insert it. But if we click create blob, there you have it. You have like a nice vector. So that's just, a, that's a plugin I really like use often. yellow but we'll probably make slightly transparent too so like a five and then we can actually i think reuse the shape here as well maybe rotate it around Yeah, if you're looking for like random shapes using your designs and you don't care what they look like, that's a really good plugin to kind of play around with as well. Okay, awesome. To finish things off, we can see if we can finalize up our subscriber email section. So I'm gonna just add in a heading, make it H2, but white. Oh, I should have edit our h2 heading decrease the line height so like i mentioned before great way of editing your assets do it from the assets panel and then it'll update on all the elements in your design so especially when you have multiple different pages yes So while Elsa is typing, make sure to check out her YouTube channel, which is Elsa Amri. She has a bunch of these uh, awesome videos all about Adobe XD UI UX design. So make sure to check them out and make sure to give her a subscribe. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so I also kind of just love talking to people about different things. So if you just wanted to like talk about design or anything, Feel free to reach out. I'm totally open to that as well. Same. Yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. So for this section, I actually wanna have like a this shape that's kind of off the artboard a bit. And we're gonna use our I think we might use like our regular yellow here. And we're gonna put like a plant in this section, ideally. So I should decrease our size of our artboard. But before I go grab our last plant that we're gonna be working with, let's create a really quick and easy input field or other form. So here, this is our button that we're using. So this time it's gonna say, subscribe. And then for our input field, we can actually make it yellow too. Maybe white. I might
and then that as our button and move that in. So all the time we want to make sure we have a placeholder for our input field. So in this case, they'll put in their email address. I'm going to decrease the opacity a bit a bit though. Sure, that we're clear that it's an input field, and just like that, we have a very simple, straightforward form for people to, you know, subscribe to our newsletter. So, to preview our design so far, we have our hero section, and then we have a product gallery for like new plant arrivals, and then we have a section for you know having people subscribe. So let's go in and add our final plant really quick. Go with this one here. And we'll just kind of crop that out real quick. I'm actually like so tempted to also build this in Webflow. <laughs> <laughs> After being done, I'll like finish off the landing page in XD and then go and build it in Webflow as well. Carpio says it looks nice. Uh, thank you, I'm glad. I'm glad it turned out well. our final plant to our library to so going back to our site it is here we'll wait a second for it to appear you notice now that they're all layer zero which is you know it'd be hard to keep track of if you have a so we can actually rename them directly in xd so like plant one plant two and this can be plant three as well so like just as a tip i think it also automatically reorder yeah it reorders them according to the name as well sort by name or custom order so those are also cool things that you can work with in nxt if you want to as well it's all about the speed how do we how can we make ourselves more efficient yeah But you can also do uh, inside of these libraries and inside of your asset panel in XD is you can create groups and that's especially important. Just imagine if you have like 20 different pages, especially with e-commerce websites where you have a bunch of different products. So organizing your assets is really key not to drive yourself crazy because as your project starts to grow, uh, just imagine like we mentioned before, if you export some of those assets like PNG images to two, two times the size, three times the size, for example, you have to store them somewhere and it's just a good common sense practice to organize them into folders. So it's much easier mm -hmm. to access them, especially if you're sharing this project with somebody else like a developer or like a designer who is outside somewhere. So just good practice to do. A hundred percent, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think our design is done for now. Ideally, we would also go in, obviously, maybe add in a couple more sections, feature collections, a footer as well. So those are a couple of other things you can add to this design. But for now, this is kind of Kind of just a really quick concept that we were able to do and I added in the final plant here um, which I think kind of the colors as well the yellow the dark gray and obviously the green comes from the plant itself so this was a this is a fun design to do definitely it looks super nice and I love the colors me too I also really like the colors To icons, redesign. 
change this real quick. And I think like the other thing also as well, I've mentioned a couple of times that I'm not a very big plant person. So, you know, obviously this is not an easy concept to go with, but what I did beforehand was kind of looked up existing designs around plants, also just about e-commerce sites in general to create a bit of a mood board. And that helps a lot when you are approaching designs that maybe you haven't really done before or you don't know where to be or where to start from. Foundation, Dribble, Behance, those are definitely my top two places for finding inspiration for designs. It helps you kind of establish a starting point as well when you are working on something new. Yeah. So we are almost at the end of this live stream. So if you guys have any more additional questions for Elsa or for myself, let us know in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. I'm excited to see who's next. Who's the next guest on, on the stream? We shall see. I'm cooking <laughs> something really special soon, but everybody has their own different businesses or their own different clients so it's really difficult to find people and to i don't know just organize all of this so that's why i said to my youtube subscribers on the channel uh pay attention to this series from time to time so it's not going to be let's say every single wednesday because it's just impossible to pull all of it together so i'm really grateful to you for your time and for sharing uh, your knowledge on design and xd to my audience yeah, of course. I mean, this is really fun. So I, I'm always up for doing like live stream design sessions. Um, I think sometimes when you are working, you get so caught up in doing work that you don't even have time to do just something for fun. So this was really, yeah. it was like nice to get the time to do this for fun as well. Glad you enjoyed it. I certainly have. So. <laughs> If, if that's it for this design, let's wrap things up. It looks beautiful and you guys can check it out on Elsa's uh, pages. Make sure to check out her portfolio, elsaamri.com. Make sure once again to go to her YouTube channel. Make sure to check her out on Twitter, on Instagram, as well as on LinkedIn. And make sure to follow her work on Behance to get to know what she is working on and what she is doing so that's it for today thank you so much elsa for sharing your time uh, with my audience and i hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time take care bye thank you guys <laughs> thank bye. you so much for joining